All right, so we're looking at an Axe 2.0. Customer sent this one in, um, said it's got a cycling issue where it's not shooting, which is something we've seen before on Axe 2.0s. But um, I wanna read the ticket to you that I have in the my uh, ticket system that sh tells us what the customer has said is going on with the gun. Uh, so I'm gonna read that one to you so you guys have a better idea of what's going on with this. So they said they took it to the field brand new and the refs went to adjust the velocity, but it wasn't increasing. The ref then cranked the small screw on the regulator, which I'm assuming they're referring to this one, all the way in and then a loud screeching sound started to come from the regulator. So I believe that something in the regulator of the marker is busted and would like to have it repaired. So. Uh, a couple things with that. Um, I know you're at a field and you would expect people that work at a field to understand how a gun works. Don't expect that. Most of those people don't know how every gun works and um, they might think they know how to fix something and they can make it worse or they can make it not work at all. Um, so in the ticket, it said that the ref adjusted the screw, turned it all the way in, and then it started to make a loud screeching noise, which would happen. Absolutely. hundred percent would happen. If you had a tank on this and it was pressurized and you turned this in, basically you turn the screw in, you're increasing pressure. And when you increase pressure, at a certain point, this regulator is going to purge. It's designed to bleed off that pressure. If we look at this section of the regulator right here, and I take this out. Underneath here, you got a spring and this little cap. This spring goes in there. This goes down inside here like this. So this sits and you can see with the spring here, it's, it can move up and down on itself right there. Boop, 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 boop. So when this is inside here, this spring is pushing this cap out and this cap has a, a rubber seat on it right here. And that seals up against the bottom down there. If the pressure that you are adjusting here, if you start to turn it up too high, it will overcome this spring pressure right here. So this spring can only push so hard and it's pushing this brass piece forward and sealing it against there. But if the pressure coming against it from this side is stronger than the spring, then this cap will open or it'll get the pressure. I should say it's not going to open. The pressure will push the cap back, no longer sealing, and the pressure will escape out the side. And that's how this is designed. That's why there's holes in it to purge pressure if you've turned it up too high. So in the ticket, when he says the ref turned it up and then it started to squeal and screech and make a really loud noise. That's very normal. It should do that. If it doesn't do that, then that's an, a different problem, but that's normal. Now, um, I'm assuming they tried to take this apart when it didn't work. Cause it says in the ticket that it was brand new when they took it to the field, but I can see that the grips have been off because the grips are folded over underneath there. If I look at the backside right here, the brass insert that's inside here, I can see scratches on it right there. I can see around the edges of it. Um, there are scratches around the edges. So somebody tried to take that apart and look inside of it and see what's going on. Uh, so we'll pull this apart real quick just to make sure that everything looks okay inside there. And then we'll focus on the other things with the uh, cycling. So as the gun is set up right here, I'm going to gas it up and then we're going to see what's happening. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to check the setting on the board. 
Uh, well, actually, let's, let's just shoot her real quick. Let's just do that first. So, guns on. Eyes function, which is good. We turn the eyes off. I get solenoid activation. I can hear that, so that's good. Let's go ahead and screw this in. Gas it up. So it's it seems a little bit low in pressure right now. So that's something we're going to look into. Um, it's definitely cycling, but let's see what the velocity is on the gun right now. I'm going to take it to the chrono and shoot it real quick. Let's see here. So that's 247 right there. So it is low. 230 right there. So we definitely want to turn that up. Um, but they said they tried to turn it up and it would not go any higher. And I can see that they tried to turn it up because if I look at the velocity adjustment on the back, the velocity adjustment is almost flush with the back. And to get a set, or I should say to have um, velocity be at about 270 or so, typically, this is not always a fact, this is where I start with guns right here, typically flush, right here with your reg adjustment and then your velocity adjustment on the back right here should be about three quarters of a turn out from all the way in. This gun right here is, let's see, one, two, this is about two full turns out. You should never need to turn that far out to try to achieve velocity. Once you get past a certain point, it's not going to matter how far you turn this. You will not increase velocity because you need to increase pressure in the gun. This will only control so much if the pressure is correct. So probably what's going on with this is this is not high enough. Your input pressure isn't high enough. It's probably at like 150 or so. And they tried to adjust this. They turned it, it wasn't going. So they turned it a little more, wasn't going any higher. Turned it more, wasn't going any higher. At that point, it doesn't matter. Until the total input pressure over the gun goes up, this will not control velocity after a certain point. And so that's what's going on. To have it two turns out and only shooting 230, 240 feet per second, that's, that's bananas. We should be able to, like I said, with a... Velocity setting of three quarters of a turn. So there's a half turn, three quarters of a turn. We should be able to achieve 275, 285 feet per second, just like this. And the only way we're going to do that is by increasing reg pressure through there. Um, so let's, uh, let's do that real quick. Oh, Another thing we should check also is the dwell setting to make sure that that is not out of whack anywhere. And on this uh, factory dwell setting, I believe is eight milliseconds on an ax 2.0. And I'm looking at the manual. Eight milliseconds is 11 blinks in orange. So let's go into programming. Go to orange, check it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So the dwell is correct inside here. So there's no reason for me to reset the board or anything because the dwell setting is correct, which is really what we want right there. So we don't need to change that. We can power the gun off. Um, we can power the gun back on. 
So let's see at, will we put this at three quarter turnout, right? Let's just see where our velocity is at with the, we haven't touched the reg. So the reg pressure is the same. 153 feet per second right there. So 153, we're getting 230 by turning this out as far as we want it to. We got it up to 230 or so. But again, like I said, with that being three quarters of a turnout, we should be able to get velocity out of it. So I'm going to go probably looking at that. I'm just about flush right there. I'm going to do, let's do um, a quarter turn. So we're going to go quarter turn in right there. So now we're just under flush with that. And let's kind of see where we end up velocity wise. 249. So just from increasing our overall pressure by a quarter turn, we've gone from 100 and what I say, 130, 140 PSI or uh, feet per second to 240 feet per second all while keeping our adjustment in the same spot. Do one more just to make sure. 252, right there. Now I'm shooting reball through the 675 insert, which is what reball tends to be about right there. I'm gonna grab some more. So we got 250, 240, 250 out of there. I'm going to adjust this just slightly more. I'm going to go maybe a sixteenth of a turn right there. Tiny, tiny bits. You do not need to turn this like five times or anything like that. Same with this. You do small adjustments, tiny, small adjustments. All right. So that now is... 256. Let's see if we got another one. 257. So let's go up a little bit more. And again, I'm going to do a little bit of a turn. 272. Two sixty six, two seventy. We'll go again, tiny bit more. I want to get to that two eighty mark, and then I'm going to leave it alone. Two seventy seven. 277, 275. Now I can, of course, increase that a little bit. Let's see if that changes anything. But again, you see how much I changed that. 284, barely any. 278. So as far as Cycling and velocity goes, this gun's right on right there. Most fields are 270 to 280 feet per second. That's going to be perfect at those fields. Let's look for... Good, it's not shooting down in any way. Spring was on, correct, so it was on the right way. We've got lubrication on there, lubrication on here. I don't see any debris. So this is all good. Everything feels good inside here. Don't see any issues with the inside. Don't see any dirt paint or goo in there. 
Um, I would try to fix that real quick. This will just over time make it so that it won't seal and then you can't keep paint out. Take those ones from up top. Take that as a note. In the CS3s. Yeah, I'm going to take the other side off too. You can already see how it's kind of been cramped right there. So I'm going to bring this side in first. That way it's underneath all the way around. Then I'm going to do that side underneath all the way around. <clears throat> it just makes a better seal. That gun, this part of the gun is going to get shot a ton. And you want to make sure that you keep paint and debris out of that area. You've got a board connector right there, your main board here, your upper sensor board here. So we want to make sure that stays as clean and paint free as possible. Now, I said we we're going to take the reg apart just to look inside there. They're two CS3s, not LV2. Yeah, that's why I said take them for those CS2s or CS3s you broke up. So there's two oh. team additions up there. Take yeah, yeah. them down. Next. And use them. You can; those can be broken down right away. Yeah. All right. So got that. We're gonna pull this apart just to make sure everybody's looking good in there. Take the cap off. This is on correct. We're gonna pull this off. A little loosey goosey right there wasn't tight but I'm suspecting that someone's tried to open this up or has been in this already comes off of there so we've got our plunger and our spring in there don't lose those they're super easy to lose and then we've got our core we're gonna get out now I have a special tool that's made to remove those cores out of there and I can see scratching around there, so I know someone's tried or has gotten it out. Uh, you can also use a very thin walled socket to get in there and get that out. But these are designed for getting these cores out. I want you to look at this before I take it apart too and see this slot right here where this goes inside. That's gonna be very important when we go to put it back together in a minute. All right, so we've got the top of the core right there. That's the part that you can see. There's the inside of the core right there. So those parts come together. Um, you can, sometimes you'll get a leak out of this and it'll be leaking out the bottom right here. You can replace uh, typically this O-ring and this o-ring right here caused that leak through the bottom. This one just seals these two pieces together. So it's rare that this o-ring goes bad. Also, this o-ring right here, this is what the, um, the pin rides through on this one. And there's our pin inside there. Pin rides through that o-ring right there. All right, so we put our core down over here. And then we've got our rest of our parts inside there. Now you again need a special tool to get this out. If you just try to go to this part uh, and turn this, it'll just spin around and around and around and it will never come out. It just will turn and turn and turn and turn and turn. 
And what it's doing is it's turning that part in there too. So what you need to do to get this out is you need to put something in here. I usually use an Allen key and hold it so that it doesn't come out. And then you need this tool. It's just a little socket tool right there. And that goes in. Oops, that's the wrong one. That one's too wide. I need a different one. Oh, that one's too small. Someone has ran off with it. This one. Yes. So that's the one you need right there. So this goes in. We're going to lock it into that. And then we're going to unscrew it but we want to hold on to this piece on the outside here so that it can't move. So that's what that hole is for on the outside. Hold on to that. And then we can unscrew this. And as you can see, I'm not letting this part rotate while I unscrew that inside right there. Now that can come off of there. We've got our spring and our reg seat. This is the most important part inside the whole thing. So this is our reg seat. Reg seats are in all regulators right there. Um, so this controls one of the main things that controls the airflow through there and the correct regulation of the air as far as pressure goes. If this is damaged, has debris on it or something, it can't regulate properly and it will overpressurize or underpressurize, typically overpressurize and cause an issue inside there. This piece is concave on one side and is flat on the other. The concave side is what rests against this beveled edge of the pin. So this goes through here like that. We've got this, this inside here. So this sits in like this, and this comes through like this, and these two parts thread together. Now on the other end of this is this. So you've got your spring on this side, your plate on this side, and then you've got this adjustment screw. So when you turn this adjustment screw on the outside here, you're pushing the screw into the plate and compressing the spring, this spring right here, you're pushing this way. Or if you take this screw and you back it out, this one, you're relaxing this spring and it's changing the position of this pin right here. It's allowing this pin to move because you're pushing against this. And so by Adjusting how much you're pushing on this spring here, you're controlling where this piston can and can't go, and you're controlling then how this thing can regulate pressure. So this little puck is very important right there. So you ever have a reg issue, not a leak, but a pressure issue, that's the culprit usually right there, and you want to look into that. All right, let's put it back together. Everything looks fine inside here. That's going to go back on here like that. We're going to take this and this. Make sure our, again, our concave side is against our beveled edge right there, not our flat side. Put that in there. Then we're going to screw it together. And as I screw it, you'll see this start to suck in sucking in right there. And now as I turn, it's bottomed out, but now it's rotating. So to make sure that it's tight, I'm going to put my Allen key back in. And then I'm going to turn with the pressure of my Allen key and just make sure that it's tight. <clears throat> now, when it comes to tightening that piece in there, you just want to make sure that it is tight. Don't overdo it. That pin that goes through there is very thin. And if you crank on it, you'll snap that pin right off. 
and then you'll be really in a pickle right there because you'll need to replace this brass piston and the pin and those can be difficult to source individually sometimes. All right, so putting this back on, 100% imperative that the spring goes first and then the plate goes on top of that. If you go this way, if you do plate, then spring, when you try to adjust the screw, that screw is just gonna go in the middle of the spring and it's not gonna push against anything. You need to have the spring and then the plate so that the screw can push against the plate and make a difference. If there's no plate there, the screw just goes in the middle of the spring and nothing happens, nothing changes. If you ever take this cap off, it most likely will adjust where your screw is sitting when you go to put it back together. So I'm gonna watch this screw as I screw it back in and make sure that it's rotating along with the cap. If it moves up or down, or it's just gonna move up, uh, make sure you readjust that again. All right, we can put this back together. I'm gonna put this in without the cap. We wanna make sure we put it in the correct direction. So the pin should be facing out so that it can go through the cap. And we want this slot to line up with this slot right here. All right, you can see the slots right there. We want to make sure it goes all the way back. So you want to push that all the way back and it'll kind of snap into place and be perfect right there. Now, here's the tricky part. I'm going to move this slightly forward. So that's my that's the pin that's inside here, right? What I don't want is the pin completely in the way. I want to move the pin slightly out of the way. Because when we go to put this in, that needs to, the pin rides on this ramp right here. So when this gets forced in by the lever, it forces the pin out. When you flip the lever off, the spring that is underneath it right here, pushes the ramp back up and it allows the pin under the pressure of the tank right there to retract uh, and go back. So what we want to have happen in the way that I do this, I take an Allen key and I put it in there. So I'm basically indexing that core that I put in there so that that core can't rotate as I try to put the cap on it. Because what will happen if I put this in and I start to turn this, the core is going to rotate also inside there at some point. I don't want that to happen. I need to keep that perfectly up and down right there. So I'm going to put this Allen key in there, which is roughly the same size as the slot right here so that I can then put that in there. There we go. And then I can turn this and put that in there. Now I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit of extra pressure on that. And I'm going to pull this out. And then I'm going to look to make sure that my core hasn't shifted. Because if you use a, an Allen key that's too small, there's some play in there and it will allow the core to rotate just a tiny, tiny bit. And then when you try to go put this in, sometimes you push it down and it'll get jammed in there. It'll wedge because the core is rotated just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in pin in there. I'm going to drop this down inside here. And then I'm going to use a punch or something like this. And I'm going to push up and down on it just to make sure that it moves up and down freely. If you push this down and you take the whatever you're using to push down and off and it's stuck down inside there, your core is rotated and it's pinching and binding that. Another thing that can happen with this when you're pushing on this especially if you try to do it with like a tiny little Allen key like this, you'll push, the Allen key will slip off and then this thing launches out and you'll lose it. So make sure you're something using something that's nice and wide so that it can't slip off and get lost. All right, now I'm gonna put the lever back in. Tighten that up, and then I'm going to 
gas the gun up one more time. Since I took something apart, I'm going to gas it up again and make sure that I didn't pinch something, do something that makes the gun not work. Gun's ripping, ready to go. I'll take it outside, I'll shoot some paint through it, just to make sure everything's good, but gun's 100% ready to go. See you in the next one.